Did you make one of these five mistakes when purchasing insurance? If you're a business owner and you're sitting at the table thinking about signing a new policy, there's five things I want you to look for and consider just before you buy. Don't make that mistake. Hi, I'm Samuel F. Robinson, and thank you for looking at my channel. Remember to like, share, and subscribe should you find this information rewarding and interesting. So there are five mistakes. Let's go over mistake number five, not enough coverage. Oftentimes when we sit down to calculate, we calculate from a position of how much money we can pay instead of how much money will they need. This is one mistake that you definitely do not want to make. And stay to the end of this video. I'm going to share with you a bonus method that you can use to ensure that you have the proper amount of coverage. Starting with number four, policy riders. Some policy riders are free, others are not. It's important for you to review the policy riders and choose the ones that benefit you most. Choosing them now gets you that same coverage at a discount, so you're not paying full price for it. Think about you are in a store and something goes on sale. You're not certain if you need it, but you know that if something happens, you wish you had it. Rather than wish and hope, you get the policy rider. Some policy riders fall off after a while, and so you want to look at those. When it comes to policy riders, Another thing that you want to consider is, does it increase the policy or is it free? Going to number three, when it comes to exclusions and limitations, this is something you want to know. What are the exclusions? What are the limitations prior to getting the policy? Simply because when it comes to what you can and can't do, when you sign the policy, if something goes wrong and it was excluded, then you don't get paid. And that's a sad state to be in after you've paid so many years for this coverage. So look at the restrictions and the limitations prior to signing a policy. And it doesn't matter what kind of policy you purchase. That brings me to number two. Number two is policy types. There are several types of policy. You need to choose the one that best fits you. Now, I, for one, my personal story is I prefer to choose policies that have a cash benefit. I know that Dave Ramsey speaks differently and term is best. I believe term is best in certain situations, especially when it comes to business owners and short term policies. Think about it like this. When you purchase a term policy, you're basically stating that I will die within this period for this policy to have any value. Do you plan on dying within that period or you're hoping to outlive that? So it's not the best when you're thinking in that concept. Now, when you're thinking in terms of cash value, you ask yourself, OK, will I need to borrow from this policy down the road, which is ultimately going to be cheaper than going to the bank, which also is better because I don't need any credit to qualify. I'm borrowing my own money from I'm borrowing on my own money while my money is still making money. Pay attention to the type of policy and make sure that it fits your business need. When it comes to who is watching and who is this for, you're the business owner. You may be getting a policy for your child. You may be getting a policy for your business. Pay attention to the type of policy. Let me take a moment to thank you, the viewers, for logging on and subscribing and hitting the notification bell. And to also thank vidIQ for they are tools that they allow me to use, and you can use these same tools to audit your YouTube channel if you have one, and also Scribe. Scribe allows you to make books or manuals. So you simply go to the website, 
and it records all the steps. You can put together a manual right there and then edit out the parts that you don't want. And now you have a manual to give to your employees or to guide somebody on how to do some procedures. I use it for standard operating procedures. This allows me to document the steps and then hand it to the client. Getting to number one. Number one is hmm, the die method. And the die method is a way how to calculate the total amount of coverage that you need. Let's review it. So you want to look, get a piece of paper. This is better. Get a piece of paper and watch this. You take all your debts that you have and you write that dollar amount. Multi well, before you get into the multiplication part, you write that dollar amount, all your debts. What will it take to pay off? Well, let's get into D. That was D. Let's get into I, which is income. What will it take for your family to maintain the lifestyle they have now after you're laid to rest? You want to put that number down and multiply it times 10. And if they're younger, multiply it a little bit longer. Let's go to M, mortgage. There's a few things that you want to consider when writing that amount in. Don't just write what you owe to pay off the mortgage. Also estimate the taxes over the next 10 years and calculate that. Now, you don't know the amount because that can change year by year, but you want to at least have something in the kitty so that should something happens, they don't have to come up with the entire amount out of their pocket. So they pay off the house and all they have is taxes. Last is E, education. So whether or not they're going to go to college, you want to calculate for that. Because let's say that they choose not to go to college, at least they'll have some money to start a business. So calculate that. Now you take those numbers and you run them out for 10 years, and that's the amount of coverage that you need. Now, what you're doing is you take that amount, and then you take the amount that you could afford to pay, and you meet some place in the middle. Now, here's the bonus. Review your policy on a regular basis. Annually before your birthday is a good time to review it. So whether your insurance agent calls you, whether I'm your insurance agent, you want to make sure it's in your schedule to review your coverage on at least an annual basis because times change. You may have purchased a bigger home. Your kids may have started their business already. They may have finished college already. So in some cases, you're able to reduce the coverage and have more cash in your policy. Now, when I say cash in your policy, I'm referring to cash value policies that allow you to have the policy generate cash. So over time, you have something you can borrow from. There are other types of policies, and this is term policy that does not have coverage, does not have a cash value. So you pay, and this is great if you are doing something short term within a certain period of time. There's one more bonus I have for you, long-term care. In this day and age, if you haven't noticed the trend, we're living longer, but not necessarily healthier. A lot of insurance companies now are promoting preventative health. They want you to live longer so that they don't have to pay. And I think it's a win-win situation because you don't want to die. They want you to live and then you keep paying. I think it's a win-win that we're looking at it from that standpoint. When it comes to term, that's a little different. All right. My name is Samuel F. Robinson. And thank you for joining the channel. Remember to share this with somebody and subscribe if you haven't. See you in the next video where we're going to talk tech.